Now let's talk about how we can provide more information when we're talking to somebody to like giving a small, making a small talk, just asking how somebody's doing so that we can follow up a greeting. What we have here is that the most basic question is imainatas kashanki. You could also say imainaliatas kashanki. We're going to talk about those other possibilities, but the base is imaina. And kashanki is the copula is how are you, what you're saying. The answer to that can be nyoka alinglian kashani. I nyoka, I alinglian kashani, I good, just good, am. I am just good. And since I was talking about how open this is, because we want to make you know small talk, we have other op other possible options for for the answer. So nyoka alinglian kashani could be nyoka kusiskalian kashani. I am just happy. Nyoka saikuskalian kashani. I am just tired. Nyoka kasiska kashani. I am at ease. I am quiet. I am feeling fine. Kasi 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 means something that is not busy. So I'm at ease. Liakiska kashani. Liaki liakiska in this case means saddened or I am sad. So here is a list of the words that we've been using in this very in this example of small talk. What you can see is that there are two suffixes that are being used in this exchange. Well, actually there are three. Tag that you can see used in the question how it it's not just how but imainatag. The other one is the suffix lia and finally the suffix m what we can see here is that tag lia and m are what we are going to call independent suffixes this is a very important class a very important type of suffixes in quechua they are capable of attaching to any word in the sentence they don't make distinction between noun verb or particle, which are the main grammatical categories in Quechua. So to say in a, in a much more simple way, suffixes like tag, lia, and m, you can combine, you can use with any other word, depending on what you want to convey. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Tag and lia, they signal politeness. So they are used to soften, to soften a, st a statement. So if you want, if you don't, if you, you could actually say, Imaina kashanki. But if you say that, you're going to sound too harsh. If you say imaina kashanki, that is almost as if you are challenging somebody to tell me if you're there. So it is very important that you say imainatag, because in that way you're saying, so how are you? It's like you want to stress that your question comes from a good reason to ask. It's like I'm keeping up with the conversation. Lia means just, and it is very commonly used with any word in Quechua. In fact, I could have said also for the question, Imaina, Imaina liatag, Imaina liatag kashanki. So if you say that, what you are doing is you are creating a question that is even more polite. As we saw before, for any possible answer to how are you doing, you are also going to add the, the suffix me, which has two forms. The form that is m and the form that is me. So when you say the word alguien, the one that you're going to use is alguien me. But if you have alguienlia, just fine, alin plus lia, then you're going to use the M. So the difference is that here you're ending with a vowel and here you're ending with a consonant. So me attaches to consonants and M attaches to vowels. But it's the same suffix. It takes two forms. It means the same. What does it mean? Well, it is an evidential suffix. What it does is conveys an assertion based on the speaker's first-hand experience. 
affect their immediate experience. So the only thing that you're saying when you say alin liam is I'm, it's just fine as I can experience. So I am telling you that I'm fine because I know how I feel. So I, so after one has addressed you by saying imaynatas kashanki and you have replied nyoka alin liam kashani, nyoka kusis kalyan, nyoka alin mi, any way you want to say that, then it is always good to answer to ask the same thing to the other person. So to retribute the question so you can show interest too. So kamri imaynatah kashanki. When you say kamri imaynatah kashanki, you are asking that person and you, how are you? And that person is going to say, or you or that person can say, nyokapas alinglian kashani. I am well too, or me too, I'm, I'm just fine, I'm just good. What we're seeing here is another set of independent suffixes, ri and pas. Let's take a look at those. Those independent suffixes appear like any other independent suffix, tah, lia, and m, are the same type of suffix as ri and pas, and all of them have a different function, but they can only appear once in a word, in a sentence. The exception to this is lia. Lia is the most versatile of all of those suffixes, and you can and it and it will appear maybe more than once in a sentence, but never more than once in a word, and it can take different positions in a word. We're going to explain that later. It wouldn't be wise to do this at this point. So the function of ri is to change topic. So what it means is, what about you? So kamri is what about you? Nyokari is what about me? And then you have pas. Pas means also. In fact, Pas has many meanings in Quechua, but the most basic one is to add something else. It's an additive if you want. So in more uh, simple terms, it means also. So nyokapas means also also I, me too. Nyokapas alinglian kashani, I am also fine. The most important thing about these suffixes is that these independent suffixes is that they have to be placed in the word that you want to focus your message. You want to you want to express the meaning of ri or the meaning of pass based on what you are talking about, wh which part of the sentence you are focused on right now. That's the one you want to put the these independent suffixes. This is very easy to see, actually. It sounds complicated, but it's fairly easy to see. If I'm asking, if I say Kamri, obviously what I'm talking about is you, because I'm saying, let's talk about you. What about you? So if I'm talking about you, then when you answer, you have to talk about yourself. So you're going to say, I. So Nyokapas is me too. I'm fine. So in Quechua, it makes sense to say it this way. You are not going to hear that when somebody says Kamri, and let me use this here. If somebody says Kamri imainatah, imainatah kashanki, the answer is going to be nyoka pas alingliam kashani, but you are not going to find nyoka something like Nyoka alinglia alingliapas This form here Nyoka alingliapas Nope, you're not gonna find that Very clearly you are not gonna find that because you've been asked about you not about being good The focus is you therefore Nyokapas you are the one who is also good. So you're focusing on your ex on, on the corresponding notion to the question that you've been asked or, or to whatever has been 
mentioned or uttered before before so that is the reason why you have to you have to be careful where you place these independent suffixes they could go anywhere in fact there are going to be forms there are going to be answers whose proper who, whose proper form is going to be alingliapas that is that is going to be that is a perfectly possible form in quechua but it, it happens but it happens that it is not the answer to the question or to the to, to the previous statement of kai kamri in my kashanki that is not going to be the correct answer. Very well, we have learned how to say very basic questions and how to greet people, how to say hello. Alilianchu, alekliachu, aliliangmi, walekliam, imainaliam, alingliam, walekliam, kusiska, etc., etc. And we have also introduced the notion of independent suffixes. Those suffixes are very tricky to use, but you will learn how to use it just by thinking very clearly what is the thing that the speaker is focusing on? What is it that they are conveying to you? What is that we are paying attention as, as the most important part of the exchange? And then that is going to give you the hint on where is the independent suffixes going to be attached. Very well, I hope that you uh, learned something new today and let me know if you have any questions during class time. Thank you.